Hello Catstone folks, today I'm going to be going through how to bootload to any of the EFM32 series MCUs. Uh, this is a pretty simple process. Over here I have this application note 42 for USB UART bootloaders. I'll be putting all the links to these in the description. Over here we have our test setup. This is one of our semi-final uh, hardware pieces and we are using an FTDI cable for serial to um, bootloader communication. You'll notice in the bootloader document here uh, that it is compatible for all of these devices. A couple of the main things that I'd like to point out is that your debug SWCLK pin must be pulled high. Uh, for us that is our PF0 pin over 4k ohm resistors. Uh, that resistance may be different per device so you're going to want to look in your data sheet and figure out exactly which one works for you. Next in the process you'll notice that they use a program called TerraTerm to reach the bootloader communication. Uh, the bootloader generally uses GPIO pins E11 and E10 for UART communication. That is these pins right here for us. Just make this a little bit bigger while we're showing the setup. We have that plugged into the TX and RX pins on the FTDI cable, which is going to a USB and plugged into the computer. Couple steps before you can go into the bootloader mode. You need to verify that uh, your debug SWCLK pin is pulled high, like we've done here. This is pulled in. And then also, you need to reset the device. We have our uh, reset pinned out to a header here. So we can simply plug it into ground to make sure that we are accessing bootloader mode. You'll also need to be supplying um, power and ground to the rest of your system. And everything needs to be on the same ground line. Um, so we're just doing a single power supply here. We're running 3.3 volts into the board at the moment. Our deployment test is simply going to be blinking this LED. So you'll notice right now in reset mode, the board is off. As soon as I remove ground from the reset pin, the LED should not turn on because the debug SWCLK pin is still pulled high. That's good. So now I'm going to go through some of the setups on the simplicity side to make sure that uh, you are ready for deployment. So I created a new workspace here. I'm using simplicity version 5. However, version 4 will work just the same. In Simplicity here, you're going to want to add a product and you're going to want to search for the exact board that you're using. In our case, this is the EFM32WG280F256 and add the product over there. Here you can see the target part and we're actually going to create a new project to walk through all of the steps to do this. We're going to create an empty C project and we're just going to link all of the SDKs. We'll call this test boot. So now Simplicity has created a project for you that is ready for um, your specific target part. So you have to make sure that you use your specific target part. The next thing that we want to do is go into properties. You're going to open your C, C++ build. You're going to open your settings and you're going to go into memory layout. Now the reason this step is important is because we need to verify that we are not overwriting the flash that's already in place. There are other options to do this using an IAR linker. However, we found it a little bit easier to create applications with Simplicity Studio. So You'll notice that here they say change the origin to 400. However, this memory offset is going to be specific to your board. So you need to look into your data sheets and find out exactly what your offset is. For our board, the origin needs to be set at 0x1000 to verify that you are not erasing uh, the bootloader setup that's already built into the board. So I had to go in and reset my length real quickly. Um, this is what it was supposed to originate at. You're gonna take your length, you're gonna put it in your programming calculator, 
and you are going to subtract your new origin. This will provide you with your new length. Once that's in there, you can apply and you can close it all up. Now, I'm gonna copy and paste in a setup that we used in the past and I'm gonna have to pause so that I can go copy that. Okay, I'm back with the copied code, so I'm gonna replace this in my main. You'll notice here that currently we are linking the emcmu.c and the emgpio.c. For some reason, um, our includes seem to be a little bit off, so this is a bit of a quick fix that I've found that I can show you. Currently, these aren't linking, but if you go to properties on your project, you go to C, C++ build, and settings, and you go to includes and click plus, we can include, instead of the just INC statement, we can also include the source. Click apply and close. And then you'll notice in your includes here, we now have our SRC as well as our INC. Uh, again, there's probably a better workaround, but this is just a quick fix if you're uh, not able to create references to things that you know should be referenced in the um, .h files. So now that you have your memory set up, you've got all of your includes aligned, you are able to build the project. This creates a little folder here of binaries. This is what you're going to be deploying to your board. So your next step here is going to be to open up the Terra Terminal application. And again, I will be putting a link to this in the description. Um, you'll notice here that the serial port should be selected for your FTDI device. However, if you have multiple things plugged into your computer, you're gonna to wanna to open up your device manager and check your ports to make sure that that is the correct one. Um, since this is the only thing I have in there, I know uh, COM13 is the only one. However, rather than just starting the terminal, we're gonna hit cancel and we're going to go to setup, serial port, and then we're going to provide an 115200 baud rate. Now the rest of the settings here should already be configured. However, if you look in the USB bootloader sheet, it provides the specific port setup that you'd like. Right down here in the sheet is the commands that we'll be able to provide in the interface. So now that we have that ready to go, we can click new open. Now you'll notice nothing pops up. We've reset the board, we got it all prepared. Um, however, just to verify that the communication is ready, we're gonna send an I, and that should send you your chip ID. If you get that back, that means you're in the bootloader mode and you are ready to go. From there, we're gonna send a lowercase u. That should send back a ready and a capital C. That means that you are ready to deploy your binary to the board. From there, you're gonna go into File, Transfer, X Modem, Send. And you're gonna to wanna to navigate in here to find your uh, binary that you created. So it'll be in your workspace, in your project, and then in your build folder from your project. And there you can find your binary. You just click Open, and it should deploy it over. Now, there's two different things that you could do here. One is that you could power down at this point, disconnect your terminal, um, unplug the debug SWCLK pin so that it is no longer pulled high, and simply reset your power. Um, that could be using the reset pin, or you could just power off and power on, and that will let your application run. The other thing that you can do is you can force it to run from this terminal by sending a B. Now you'll notice that our main program was simply set up to make that LED blink. So that all worked. So now the other thing that you can do, like I said, is you can close out of your terminal. I'll just keep this here. And we can unplug the debug pin from being pulled high. And then we can reset the board. Now when I unplug reset here, we're no longer gonna be in the bootloader process. If this pin were still plugged in and pulled high, nothing would happen, 
Um, and you would either need to open up the Terra terminal again and send a B or redeploy any code that you wanted to send. Um, but simply since we've taken it out of the bootloader mode, when we unplug reset, the device is just ready to keep going. And those are the main steps to deploy firmware to your board. Uh, I'd like to note that you will not be able to use the debugger in this capacity. There are other documents that I will link in the video description uh, that will tell you how to set up a debug configuration such that you can print serial lines out to your device. The main point of this is for final hardware to be prepared and ready uh, to take on firmware uh, for kind of final deployment applications. And that's about it. Thank you.